Hi everybody, welcome to the day 28 video update. Uh, sorry the it wasn't an update yesterday. Um, I've been feeling a bit crap, feeling much better today. Um, I don't think it's anything bad, it's just, yeah, just one of those days. So we're going to take a look at the hardware for the um, time-lapse capture rig. And so the first thing we've got to look at is the battery backup unit. So this is basically a battery alarm box uh, and it basically charges a lead acid battery from the mains and then if the uh, if the mains power goes out it then switches over to uh, to uh, the battery backup. It runs using a, a large lead acid battery and from a full charge we've run a piece of our sound recording equipment on this which is usually battery operated uh, for two and a half days so I'm not too worried about the amount of time that it can run for. Um, basic layout in here we're going to have the battery fitted in here with some wooden blocks and this is going to be the bottom, this, this run along here. Uh, and then that gives us room for the Raspberry Pi and all the other bits and pieces in there. So this area here is going to be uh, where we're keeping the Raspberry Pi and all of the other pieces. Uh, the Raspberry Pi itself, plenty of room in there for that. Uh, we also have a, uh, a USB hub, which I'll get out in a minute. We have the, the USB wireless adapter, and what I'll probably do is the aerial detaches on this, and uh, I'll probably drill a hole in here and mount, mount that, probably uh, with glue or something like that, in there so that we can screw in the aerial from the outside and the area will stick out the top of the uh, of the piece. Uh, I do have a flat panel high gain antenna for this so that will allow us to um, have this much further away. It does have to go in the, the far end of the polytunnel. Um, I don't think that's going to be too too problematic. We can get the Wi-Fi from the house from here uh, with the similar range extender in this building we can then get to the polytunnel. So one of the problems we have with the um, with the battery backup box as it is, uh, is that it runs 12 volts and everything else we have runs 5 volts USB power. So what I have is a uh, an in-car 5 volt supply. This will do 5 volts at 3 amps which is 15 watts. Um, so it takes in 12 volts usually from just a car's main power and it outputs 5 volts. So far the only thing that does need um, 5 volt power that isn't going to be plugged into the um, uh, to the USB extender is the Raspberry Pi which needs 5 volts This is the hardware setup so far. We've got battery, which is giving us 12 volts. 
We've got the backup power supply and battery charger, which is taking in 240 volts from the mains. At the moment, it's unplugged. Uh, it's unplugged down here. Focus on that. There we go. It's unplugged down there. Uh, then we've got our 5 volt car USB power supply. It's giving us 12, taking in 12 volts, giving us 5 volts. That's going through a little chocolate block here to allow me to attach stuff to it. This is then coming up to the USB hub, which is powered up. And then we have both the power and the data cable to the USB hard drive wired in. And we have the uh, radio. And we've got the Raspberry Pi, which uh, has power, but it did actually go through the boot up process as well. If you have a look in the, uh, the LEDs down here. And there we go. We've got our link lights there as uh, evidence that we have a battery powered Raspberry Pi. Nice one. Okay guys, thanks for watching. That was a bit of a, a short video just showing the uh, the battery backup unit and basically the well pretty much all of the kit now for the um, for the the time lapse rig. So this is gonna sit out in the poly tunnel, it's gonna charge off the mains all the time, and if the power goes out, it's then going to be able to carry over um, still saving video and uh, and then it's gonna be able to process that video and upload it. So the next uh, the next steps I want to do are um, I've got uh, I've already got some code which is up on GitHub which is using uh, OpenCV to capture photos. Uh, what I'm going to do is do a couple of there's a couple of like kind of key commits in that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a, like a short video explaining the code for each of those. Uh, and then there were some problems with that which I need to go and fix. So I've not had a chance to do that. Um, that kind of works. So that what the, what that was doing is that was capturing video. Uh, sort of capturing images from uh, the webcam on my laptop and saving them to a directory and a structure that we could then use later on to pass into uh, FFmpeg and uh, and get that to render out our video for us. Um, so there's two two things I need to do. I need to do those videos and the other thing I need to do is install OpenCV on the Raspberry Pi. Now that's not a complicated process but it's a long process. What you have to do is you have to download the source and build it on the Pi. We could set up a cross compiler, but um, I'm, I'm not filling up to that at the moment. <laughs> I'd rather leave it get compiling overnight. Um, so basically, you have to download all of the source code from their repo. You then have to configure the Raspberry Pi to build it, and then you build it, and then you leave it overnight. And about seven or eight hours later, it goes bing, and it's done. Uh, so that's that's something. What I'm going to do is I'm just probably going to do that and uh, and leave it running overnight. I've got a link to a really good tutorial that will explain how to do that much better than I could, so I'll probably just leave that uh, as part of the next video rather than um, rather than doing that. So yeah, in the next couple of videos we're going to be looking at the software which at the moment is using OpenCV and Windows, and then we're going to look at OpenCV on the Pi, and then we're looking at getting our software on the Pi. So yeah, stay tuned for that, and uh, tomorrow, which is day 29, uh, I'm probably going to be up back with the Rocket Mass Eater, that's kind of paused for a little bit for a, for a couple of days. Uh, while well, I've been getting more information from the Rocket Mass Heater group on uh, so Rocket Mass Heater International on Facebook. They're great guys, look them up. Um, they've got loads of useful information for it. So yeah, as soon as, uh, as, soon as I've worked out a couple of little problems, I'm going to then make that. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. I'm Lars Islander. This is uh, day 28 of the Year of Food, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.